to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning of the video. Most important thing is get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. One sin enough to send you to eternal hellfire. I know people don't like to hear that, but it's, but it's the truth. And you can be covered by the blood. Jesus died on the cross. He buried and he rose from the dead, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And that blood atonement is what washes away and forgives you for your past, present, future sins. Not a works you can't earn yourself through the door. Taking a look at some interesting things in, in, in the book of Luke. And going to start out with the days of Herod. So Luke's verses 1 through 4 of the first chapter of Luke, you see the introduction to his work. Verse 5, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. Now that's very interesting. That puts us to a pr precise time and reign of kings and governors. And we see here Herod, the king of Judea, being listed here. And this is an important set of verses because it helps us determine the birth of Jesus Christ as well as figuring out when John the Baptist was conceived. So the Roman Catholic you know, myth is that he was born on the 25th of December. We know that. Uh, the Christmas celebration certainly has pagan roots to it, if you want to look at it. But if you celebrate Christ, uh, the Christian holiday of um, Christmas, that's fine. I'm not judging. I just, you know, it, it's definitely got pagan roots. So what we see here in verses 13 through 17 is the announcement of the birth of John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist quickly was one of the most interesting people who came to pave the way for the king. He did baptize. The original, you know, Baptist was a Jew with, with, with a non-Jewish name. John was not a Jewish name. In fact, his name was to be Zacharias and then later changed to be John. And he is conceived shortly thereafter in verses 23 through 41 in this, this chapter of Luke. And six months later, the Holy Spirit conceives Jesus Christ and Mary of verse 26. So I've done videos on this more detailed, but you can figure out when John the Baptist was conceived. You can work out the date of Christ's birth from verse 5, because verse 5 sets the date of the conception of John the Baptist during the course of Abiah. So a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. And in 1 Chronicles 24, you see where David divided the priest into 24 divisions or, or, or courses. So this is where, you know, you see this course of Abiah to serve in the temple. And of course, a single course is, would serve one week and then there would be a change. 
And so that way, each course would serve twice a year. So each individual that has a course would, would do it twice a year, with all the priests officiating at the three main feasts, which are Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And you can see that in Exodus 23, 14 through 17. So what, what is the course of Abiah? It's the eighth division in First Chronicle 24, 10. Abijah being the Old Testament spelling of Abiah, Abijah was one of the chief men in the two households of the priests. And you can see that First Chronicles 24, 4. So again, we're looking at First Chronicles, and you can go back and see, you can see these courses. So now you can calculate out when the first time of service for the course of Abiah was. It was December 6th through the 12th, and the second time of service being June 13th through the 19th. So if you do the calculations, remember the two times of the year for each course. And the Hebrew calendar, that would be the 12th and 18th of Chislu and the 12th and 18th, 18th of Savan. And that's the Hebrew calendar. So if you make verse 5 refer to the first ministration of this course, then John the Baptist is conceived at the end of December. And nine months later, in September, he would be born around the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's if we assumed... The first course was when he was conceived. That would place the birth of Christ six months later after Passover. But that doesn't work uh, if we look at Scripture. If we look at John 1.14, let's read that verse. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That, that's the verse on the incarnation of Jesus Christ. That's the living Word. So Simon Peter calls the body, he calls it a tabernacle, 2 Peter 1, 13 and 14. So does Apostle Paul at 2 Corinthians 5, 1. So you see the word dwelt, he dwelt among us in that in John 1, 14. So Jesus Christ wasn't born at Passover, he was born at the feast, around the feast of tabernacles. So the course of Abiah in verse 5 of Luke chapter 1 is the second ministration in June. So this is when John the Baptist was conceived. It, John the Baptist was born at Passover, with Jesus Christ being born six months later at Tabernacles. It was the conception of Jesus Christ that took place on December 25th, not his birth. So if you so the, you know that you know the Christian religion you could celebrate December 25th as the conception date, possibly, for Jesus, or right around that time. Back to verse 5. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So this was John, John the Baptist's mother. Her name was Elizabeth. And she was from the tribe of Levi. But if you look down at verse 36, you can see she was cousin to Mary, who's Jesus' earthly mother. So the question is, how could this relationship be if the women were of two different tribes? The answer is found all the way back in Exodus 6.23 that Aaron marries the daughter of Ammonadib. And Ammonadib is from the tribe of Judea at 1 Chronicles 2.10. So the tribes of Levi and Judah are connected through marriage. And so that, that's an important distinction as well. So... Verse 6 here in Luke 1. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. They were both righteous before God. Well, there is none righteous, no, not one, according to Romans 3.10. But you see, there's a difference between how the Old Testament uses the word righteous and how the New Testament uses it. So none of these women were perfect women. They were just seen to be righteous. Righteous under what? Under the law. Not under... And, um, you know, they were... That didn't mean they didn't have sin. That didn't mean they were perfect. Deuteronomy 6.25, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord our God as he commanded us. That's back to the law. That's back to being seen as righteous, even though you're not perfect. It's not like today's you know, washing and regeneration and, and, and renewing of the Holy Ghost at Titus 3.5. It's, it's different in the Old Testament. So I'm, I'm here to tell you that if you look at the genealogy, if you look at Leviticus and you look at Chronicles and you look at, at Luke and you look at John the Baptist, of course, he came to pave the way for Jesus Christ. And, and a Jew named John was a new thing. And there was no water baptism before John. And he came to, to take Jesus Christ under the water to announce him to the Jews 
as the Messiah. And funny enough that uh, John the Baptist and Jesus were related through marriage, as we discussed with Mary and Elizabeth being cousins. And you, and you can tell by the course of Abiah that Jesus Christ was conceived around December 25th and was born, probably born around September. September, yeah, nine months later would be about September. Probably Feast of Tabernacles. Anyway, September, October. So I hope this is a good study. I mean, I do have a longer study on Jesus' um, and this, this course of Abiah, but this sort of maps it out. Anyway, God bless. Have a great day.